In the late 1960s, Malcolm became the icon for black power and pan-Africanism. We celebrated Malcolm, we loved Malcolm with Spike Lee's Malcolm X movie. The hip-hop generation embraced him as their icon as well. Malcolm gives you a sense of possibility that you don't have to be resigned to your status as being oppressed. That through resistance and through courage and through human dignity, we can change our environment. So the origins of my biography really begin with my own journey to understand who this brother was and what his life really was about. What I learned was that his life was far more complicated than the story presented in the autobiography. The autobiography is a story about a life of this incredible man, but he had specific objectives in writing the book. When he first began to work on it with Alex Haley, the purpose was to celebrate the role of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. His hope was that he could show through the book that he owed his life and his career to the intervention of Elijah Muhammad. In the autobiography of Malcolm X, you see the evolution of a person who moves from black separatism to a kind of Dr. King integration. That's not the Malcolm in my book. What I discovered was that as Malcolm matured and then moved toward the end of his life, that he became more revolutionary, that he had a revolutionary vision for the world. So the real Malcolm X, the Malcolm X who opposed the Vietnam War, the Malcolm X who sided with Nelson Mandela in the struggle against apartheid South Africa, the Malcolm X who embraced the struggles of Palestinian people, that Malcolm X's story had not been told until now.